Hi, everyone. I'm going to be talking about some literature-based strategies that you could use in the Library Media Center as a Library Media Specialist. And I feel like this is also very relatable in the classroom as well. So you could also use these ideas when collaborating with teachers or other faculty and staff in the building to help students be engaged and successful. So we know a goal that almost all library media specialists have are to develop lifelong learners and lifelong readers. Literacy is so crucial to all aspects of education and success. And in order to do that, we have to want make kids want to read, want to read for pleasure. The more they read, the more they learn, the better they get. And we want to make books relevant and engaging so that they are asking for the next book. I want to talk today about incorporating STEAM or STEM activities with literacy in the school library. It is a way to make reading meaningful and engaging, and students always love it. The great thing about STEAM activities is that there is almost a STEAM activity for any novel or children's book out there. It sometimes takes a little thought, a little creativity, and some planning, but there is a STEAM activity for almost any book out there, and it gets students so engaged. So the first thing that we need to ask ourselves is, what is STEAM? When you, excuse me, so STEAM is sometimes called STEM, is science, technology, engineering, arts and mathematics so stem is just leaves the a out the arts but we also feel like arts are very important for student success as well so when you put that in there you have steam and that is a way to encompass a wide range of content areas that can easily be combined with literature so with steam you um pull in problem solving skills that rigor that we want students to be able to achieve. It's a lot of project-based learning. It's a way for students to make hands-on connections to some of the literature that they are able to read. It gets them working with groups. It gets them, their brains just thinking and their stamina growing. And when you can incorporate this with a piece, excuse me, with a piece of literature, it makes everything so relevant and come together. And of course, engaging, which is always very, very important. So a question um, that has been asked is why even use STEAM in the school library? Why should we incorporate science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics in a school library full of books and resources? So while we know the first thing you probably notice when you walk in a school library is books, right? Books everywhere. And like I mentioned before, an important goal for most librarians is we want to develop those readers, those lifelong learners. We want them to be reading for pleasure at some point. And we know how important literacy skills are to success, even outside of school. However, to do that, kids and young adults <clears throat> have to be engaged and have to have hands-on um, opportunities. We want books used that are interesting to students, that are appropriate for students, that represent themselves, that represent their culture, that they can make connections to. The author Ernest Bond in his book even mentioned that, like look for the appropriateness, look for the ways that you can connect to students' diversity, look for the ways that you can get students wanting to read for pleasure. And that all stems into your choices in your library collection. Now, once as a librarian, you have done the hard work to make those great, great intentional choices for your collection. Now let's use those choices that we've made and take it up a notch and include a STEAM activity to make it even more relevant, engaging, even more um, easily, make it even easier for students to make those connections to the text that they are reading. Because once you have books chosen, it's time to make them come to life. One of Ernest Bond's quotes in his textbook, where there are numerous ways professionals who work with children and young adults can help them make connections with literature. There are numerous ways. 
professionals who work with children and young adults can help them make connections with literature. And when you can make those connections, the book means something. Instead of just handing a book to a student and telling them they are required to read it for class, let's hand them a book or let's let them choose a book that they can connect to because that is when the magic happens and that is when a love for reading starts and that is when they want more. They want more books they can connect to and their reading skills get better and their love for reading grows. We want that. And one of the ways, like Ernest Bond mentioned, there are numerous, but one of the ways that professionals can help them make connections is STEAM activities. So a big question, well, how do I incorporate those STEAM activities with literacy? It seems like a daunting task when you consider science, technology, engineering, arts, mathematics, and literacy, and it sounds like a lot, and then you're like, where do I begin? It is not difficult. Sometimes it takes some prep work, and sometimes it takes some intentional planning, but it is not difficult, and it is so rewarding. The first thing that you have to do is choose your book. You are going to choose what book you are going to plan your STEAM activity from. You have to have your book chosen first. And almost any book at any grade level can be incorporated with one of these activities. This can go from kindergarten to grade 12. Sure, the level of difficulty may be a little different, but the rigor will be the same because you're going to meet students where they are. Excuse me. So let's start with some examples. One example is with the book by Ashley Spires called The Most Magnificent Thing. Now this book, of course, is geared more toward an elementary level setting. However, we're going to see later that uh, Bond mentioned in his book that even older students love picture books. And if you use them the right way, they can still be meaningful, even with an upper elementary and middle school setting. So I would say that this activity in this book could really be used with any any grade level, maybe with an emphasis on the younger elementary. Excuse me. The steam. So the most magnificent thing. Just to give a brief overview is about a little girl who has a bunch of what people would consider junk. It's just a bunch of random parts and bolts and supplies, and she decides to create something from it. If you haven't read it, I won't give it all away, but that's the gist of the story. So after reading the book, the students can then make a connection because you can give them an assortment of random items. It can be toilet paper rolls, buttons, beads, string, bring in things from nature, leaves, twigs, grass, um, yarn, pencils, crayon, ripped up pieces of paper, paint. Literally just give them an assortment of random things and tell the students to create something. They have that freedom to think and to create and to be hands-on, the engineering aspect of it. And then they get to, of course, share with the people around them when they're finished. So what connections are students doing here? Well, they're connecting the activity they just did to the book they read because they are taking the form or walking in the shoes of the character who also had to take a bunch of what some would consider junk and create something magnificent out of it. So they get to see that firsthand experience of the character. It allows them to really understand the character. And now they have a much deeper understanding of the text and they had fun. If you look at some young adult fiction books, So when you look at some of the young adult fiction books, excuse me, um, this would be upper elementary, middle school, and maybe even high school. Like I said, you can almost pick any of them and create a STEAM activity with it. Here are some just generic STEAM activities that could be created using almost any young adult fiction. One could be 
<clears throat> excuse me, to have students construct a tiny house to represent a character in the story. Maybe they would like to do this digitally on the computer with some creative um, web tools. Maybe they would like to do this hands-on with some construction paper and boxes and clay. Maybe they have some really artistic abilities and they would like to draw this. But in order to do this, they would have to really understand the character in the story. Some of the character traits, some of the things the character went through, different aspects of the character, to be able to construct a tiny house to represent that character. Another activity could be to have students design a theme park based on the theme of a novel. Again, this comes into some student choice, similar with the first one. They could create an actual diorama if they wanted to with clay and paint and scissors and glue or draw it or use a web tool to design it. There are lots of choices here. But again, it has that connection, that deeper understanding of the story because they have to know the theme of the novel and understand the novel at a deeper level to be able to design a theme park that represents that novel. So you can see when you incorporate, these would be more of the engineering and art side of the STEAM, but when you incorporate those activities, they're not only connecting to the themes, they're connecting to the setting, they're connecting to the characters, they're really understanding the story and engaged and having fun, and I bet they're going to want to do another one. It does not have to just be with fiction. There are also many nonfiction STEAM activities. Just a brief overview could be, maybe you are reading a nonfiction book about animals, specific animals. Well, maybe in return, they could create an animal habitat to represent it. If you want to incorporate that real world, real higher level thinking, maybe after reading nonfiction books about specific animals, they have to create a brand new animal that could live in that same habitat. Maybe you are reading nonfiction texts about nat natural disasters. A STEAM activity could be to design a solution for a natural, excuse me, for a natural disaster. That designing a solution, again, could use web tools that would incorporate the technology, could be creating something that could be the engineering. If you're reading a biography, which is also a nonfiction text, Maybe you would then create a flyer about that person, design a billboard about that person, anything to get students really thinking about what they just read and then using it in a creative, higher level thinking type of way. The possibilities with STEAM activities are endless. You start with whatever form of literature or text you are going to use and you pull in that higher level thinking, those hands-on activities, those engaging activities, and you get students hooked. And if you do this, I firmly believe it's going to develop a love for reading in students because they have a whole new understanding of it. <clears throat> Many have asked about the impact of using STEAM in a library setting. Um, Rawson wrote an article and this statement was perfect. She said, STEAM learning can go hand in hand with hand in hand with library learning outcomes to create engaging and meaningful programming. STEAM increases rigor, makes learning meaningful, increases achievement, and keeps students engaged. That right there is enough to make you want to at least try it as a library media specialist. And you can really pull in STEAM activities with numerous forms of literature. It can encompass so many different aspects, different content areas. If you need to, like Bond mentioned in his textbook, giving students choice is also important. Oops, excuse me. And there are so many ways to do that with STEAM learning. <clears throat> On the last slide, I do have the resources that I used as I was preparing this presentation. 
but here I have a practice activity for teachers or library media specialists. You are going to go to the bit.ly link. You can't click the link here, but you can type that short bit.ly into any web browser and a Google form will pop up. And what you're going to do is get your creativity going in your brain and you're going to first pick a book. I'd really like to challenge my elementary teachers to pick a higher level book more geared toward middle and high school, that young adult literature. And maybe if you're in middle and high school, you can challenge yourself by picking a picture book. But I want you to pick a book first, and then I want you to create a STEAM activity that you could use with that book. But I also want you to make sure you include how that activity connects to literacy. We can find the ways that it connects to the engineering and the technology and the science and the arts, but make sure it comes back to literacy as well. We want this all inclusive, all connected together. I will show you what the, I will show you what the Google form looks like. It just says STEAM and Literature Activity. Excuse me, sorry about that. You're gonna put your name. I would love it if you put your name, not mandatory if you don't feel comfortable. Your book title and the author. Describe your STEAM activity you would use. What content areas were addressed? Did it more so encompass the technology and engineering part, the mathematics and science part, the arts part, and how are literacy, literacy skills specifically addressed? I know this is a very broad activity, but I wanted this to be a way for you to see that you can easily design a STEAM activity to go with any book you choose. It just takes a little thought and preparation. <clears throat> like I said, this is the final um, slide and is the resources I used. Um, Ernest Bond's textbook, Literature and the Young Adult Reader had so much incredible information and then an article <clears throat> by Rawson was about STEAM introduction, and it was picking up STEAM in the public library, and a lot of it was very relevant to school libraries as well. Let me stop sharing. I hope you enjoyed this presentation, and I hope you we're able to see just one way that you can incorporate literacy across content areas, even in the Library Media Center. It has an impact on student learning, on student success, and of their love for reading. And I feel like at the end of the day, that is our ultimate goal. Let me know if you ever have any questions.